My name is Brian Anderson. Uh, my name is Jan. I'm uh, Patrick Walsh. And uh, we made an autonomous hexapod robot. Uh, introduction. Uh, our, this is our uh, lovely robot. The idea is from, um, yeah, this, uh, uh, the Google driver is car. Yeah, and introduction. Go. First, uh, our robot can detect an uh, object in front of it and uh, check if there is enough room on the other two sides to, to uh, uh, finding different paths to avoid that. Uh, the robot is programmed in many movement styles, such as direct movement in 12 degrees and the uh, ability to rotation. And in the user control mode, it will uh, obey the direction from the uh, user and um, do exactly uh, uh, what we want to do. But we hope uh, this this project will be uh, adopted by the in the future for you know several people. Uh, to the system description uh, for the remote control part, uh, we use the IR transmitter for uh, uh, implement uh, this function. Uh, this system can easily describe in four parts. The first part is the front end, which is IR detector which receive lots of signals, including the signal we wanted, and uh, lots of noise too. And then, the, and then there is a ACG, uh, auto automatic gain control, will process all these uh, signals and uh, produce a stable, in a pre uh, output them in a stable range, which uh, it won't be too high or too low. And the third part is, uh, there's a four different bandpass filter which will uh, process our signals, and then the remain is the signal we wanted. And the last part will be, uh, will be the AC to DC converter, uh, which will turn our uh, signal, uh, it's usually is a sign signal, uh, and uh, go into a, a stable DC signal. And um, then uh, the, the rest of the part is just a uh, comparator and uh, uh, a two diode to make them, you know, stable in either five or zero, so the Arduino can read it. Okay, this is the uh, black diagram for my system. Uh, I can see here's the four part. The first four part is the major part, and the rest two part it can very small. Okay, go to the next page. So uh, for the robot, we used the Arduino Mega as the main part of our system. So that was going to control our servo movements, all of our, our robot itself things. And so there's three basic states for our autonomous mode. The first state was there's no obstacles in the way, so the robot can continue on its path as it would just going straight. Uh, the next state is that there is an obstacle in the way, so the robot detects it with uh, its sensors, and then it, needs, it goes through the avoidance, so it checks which side, left or right, has the most room to navigate, and it'll go in the way that it can. And then it, uh, once it, the third state is that the obstacle is avoided, it can continue forward and return to the path that it was on after it avoided its initial obstacle. Uh, we used ultrasonic range sensors, so they were positioned at 90 degree angles, one in the front and two on the left and right. Uh, we liked them because they were small, they were really cost effective. Uh, we used 12 Dagu 9 gram micro servos. Uh, they were cost effective at $5 a piece, but we find out later that they're not as reliable and they're not powerful enough. Alright, so we decided to power the system uh, uh, wirelessly. So we used uh, two 9 volt uh, nickel metal hydride batteries, which are rechargeable batteries. So we could uh, reuse them. And uh, to display all the errors, we used the 10 bar LED display, uh, which is just, you know, 10 lights in a row. And uh, we would, you know, do different 
light sequences for different errors or you know battery charges. Um, yeah. So the current battery charge, if you press a button on the uh, robot, you can see what the current battery charge is for both the uh, Arduino and for the power that we uh, use to power these servos. Because the servos need a separate uh, power source to be able to run because the Arduino wasn't giving it enough uh, current to make the servos run to their maximum capacity. And uh, the battery charge check was based on a, uh, a charge uh, voltage uh, curve that I got from the company that provided the batteries. And uh, yeah, the error check and display was uh, also a separate button uh, on the robot. So if you wanted to see, like, if your robot wasn't doing anything, you could see, hey, why is this? And you press the button, and there's you know, two lights, every other two lights is blinking. That's, hey, there's a sensor disconnect. Let's uh, figure out why that is. And I checked the sensor disconnect to see if um, the sensor was reading nothing. If the sensor is telling you, hey, I don't see anything anywhere, then the sensor is clearly not connected because it should be seeing stuff. And uh, if the battery is below 20%, it would, uh, the robot would stop moving, and uh, this, like lights would blink on the 10-bar LED display. And um, I wanted initially to have a, a servo disconnect error, but the servos are only output pins from the Arduino, so I couldn't figure out a way to make it um, detect an error with the servos. We've got three uh, little video demos of how our uh, robot was working. This first demo right here is just, you know, how it's walking forward, so it works. I have some uh, balloons tied to it to help with some weight issues. And this next one uh, demonstrates how well it can walk sideways if it wants to. But then, uh, obviously, it messed up a little bit and couldn't uh, move forward. This last one here is a good one for uh, its object detection and avoidance. And it kicks it a little bit. <laughs> uh, it, it also avoids this chair, which is nice. <laughs> so we had a lot of problems with our project. Uh, the biggest problem we had was weight. Our robot was too heavy for prolonged movement. Uh, what you saw in the videos was like one trial autonomous mode. It could probably only do two, maybe three at the max before uh, the servos got a little tired. Our uh, voltage uh, regulator got a little overpowered and heated up a little too much. And so weight was a, a very large factor that we should have considered initially from the start and put it into our hardware decisions. Uh, also our remote receiver was too heavy to integrate with the system, which was also added to our whole weight problem situation. We also had power problems. Uh, we used two 12 volt batteries uh, and we were trying to just power everything off the Arduino for the longest time, which was not a good idea at all. So we had to use another, a separate uh, battery just to power the servos, but the servos can only stand five to six volts at max. So we had to use a voltage regulator that brings the 12 volts down to the five volts we need for the servos. But bringing it down that much voltage puts off a lot of heat with the regulator. So that failing really uh, limits our robot's mobility. 
Uh, the Arduino was all right. We could we could power it off of one of the batteries, and it would last once we got all the power figured out. But we were kind of in the home stretches when that started happening. Uh, our servos were not reliable at all. They were all made. They were complete plastic uh, servos, and like when you uh, gave them the be in the middle of your setting, the teeth never lined up exactly. So when we built it onto our our uh, case for our robot, the the legs were all just a little off on all of the feet. So that caused some resistance issues with the floor, some just movement issues in general, trying to get all the legs to do the exact same thing, which is much harder than anticipated. Uh, also, they're designed to not have any of the extra systems that we wanted to put on it, so they couldn't handle the weight that we were trying to give it. And yeah, so we learned a few lessons from this project. For example, don't buy cheap the uh, servos for I think four dollars a piece, which is a very attractive figure for us because we're college students, you know. But uh, obviously, we had performance issues. Like uh, I think we lost I don't know, five or six servos just kind of broke on us, which you know costed more money. But uh, and project integration was a big issue for us too. Like. We, uh, you know, we all worked on our separate parts together, I mean, separately, that's what separate means. Um, you know, Jan did his remote, Brian did the uh, robot movement, I did the power and error checking, and we put all together, the robot would just kind of, uh, and uh, so that was a big issue. So we had to take off the remote just to get the uh, robot to be able to move by itself because of all the weight and power issues. And uh, we also lost a team member, like, Two to five weeks in, he just kind of stopped communicating with us, and we're like, "Hey, guy, where are you?" And he's like, "Oh, we're we meeting today," and he just kind of never showed up after that. So we had to pick up uh, where he left off because he was supposed to do all the uh, sensor, you know, checking like the distances and all that, and we had to do that ourselves. So yeah, I mean, we learned, you know, that our workload's going to increase when you lose a group member, but you don't have to freak out, you know, if you all just work together, you can accomplish anything. Okay, uh, in, the, in the future, uh, our project here is, the function is very limited, it's only for walking and avoid things. But in the future, we, if we want to continue on this project, we would add something, some other uh, fantastic feature on there, like add a camera, so it can be a surveillance robot and add a views to increase the, uh, the movement, the, the, move, the ability for movement. Uh, cool. uh, it could work on some other different uh, you know, surface, and uh, even on the moon, if, if possible. <laughs> okay, and uh, the third one, maybe uh, we can put a, ro a robotic clause on there to can do some other stuff. Okay, so, so are there any questions? Yes, any questions.